my knowledge, say goodbye. Jesus spent the night in fact. He's a pattern for us all, all alone. When we're stealing something in some ocean of the day, we will find it always pays to be alone. name Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, what an honor it is on this Founders Day to present another aspect of the late great Bishop R.C. Lawson. And this is the story of the exciting life and spiritual activity of those early days of Old Refuge and the Church of our Lord Jesus Christ. Coming from a home on 131st Street and building up into many rallies on Saturdays, and then to purchase a three building complex, 52, 54, 56, 133rd Street, uh, to the all the way up to today to the great two 100 year old Church of our Lord Jesus Christ of the Apostolic Faith. This presentation is honored to have one of the living eyewitnesses to see an eyewitness account of the life or the early days of what we call Beloved Refuge during the 1930s and 40s and 50s. 
I speak of that honored mother, Mother Norvell Powell, who remembers and has written about her beautiful experiences with the late Bishop R.C. Lawson as a mentor and as an encourager. She remembers the uniqueness and importance of those days to the growth and development of not only herself, but all who he touched. Mother Norvell Powell is a senior missionary in the Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ and a loyal friend to many thousands. Mother Powell, along with her great and we remember her wonderful sister mother, Mabel L. Thomas, uh, who was a former president of the International Women's Council, former uh, director of the Quiet Refuge Temple, didn't miss over 20 years in her complete and consistent and continued labor. And uh, her father came to New York when she was a very young girl, uh, and Mother Powell and uh, Mother Mabel came with her and her other two brothers. And her father's name was Reverend James Anderson, a minister and a pastor who Bishop Lawson asked him to come. He was a very learned man, and he wanted him to teach Greek at the Church of Christ Bible Institute. So he came to New York at Bishop Lawson's special request, stayed in one of the apartments provided on 133rd Street, and what a time it was since then. Mother Powell, who we will feature in an interview shortly, is married to Deacon Howard Powell. Uh, he's a very distinguished person in our organization, served as security to the late Mayor D David Dinkins. And uh, Mother Powell uh, taught in the public schools of New York for 37 years. As a young, talented girl at uh, Beloved Refuge, Bishop Lawson called upon her and her sister in many areas. She worked in Sunday school. She worked in the Saturday night prayer band. She worked uh, with the Women's Council. She worked as an administrative assistant to the missionaries, and she applied every talent she had. Mother T Powell tells us how Bishop Lawson sent her to a music school to develop her gift in singing. And today, she remains an accomplished vocalist and classical pianist. What a job she has done. At the end of this particular uh, program that we are presenting, or this presentation, Mother Powell has written a detailed uh, look at her life during the 30s and 40s and growing up, and she has written it in the 100th anniversary edition of the Contender for the Faith magazine. I've taken that article and blown it up and placed it at the end of this presentation so that someday someone will want to know about life in the early beloved refuge. They'll want some hero or someone to emulate. And Mother Powell and Mother Mabel Powell, uh, Mother Mabel Thomas are right there. Uh, we have enlarged the print so you can use it in a story or a presentation for young people. There's some young girl out there, maybe not even born yet, but when she sees what God has done through his servants, everything will be all right. So I present to you Mother Norvell Powell in her great remembrances of her pastor and mentor, Bishop R.C. Lawson. Bishop Lawson was a dynamic man who was a teacher. He was a preacher. He was an educator. He was a world traveler. He was a writer. He was a scholar. I can go on and on. He developed music. It used to be a group called the Lawsonaires, or Lawsonian Four, Mother Adabat. And then there is Mother Esther Richardson, who wrote the song. That is why I'm going 
to continue. He developed talent. And Mother Powell and her husband there uh, have worked in the Church of our Lord Jesus Christ for many years. And in this particular tape, she gives her remembrances of Bishop Lawson as her mentor and her pastor. Uh, her husband, uh, Howard Powell, Deacon Howard Powell, was, uh, as I said, the chief um, security director for Mayor Dinkins. And when they went to South Africa or when um, the president of South Africa came to New York, he was right there. Oh, we remember Bishop Lawson, this powerful preacher, this man of God, who came in to 133rd Street. And she will explain to you on the second floor, there were offices, and Mother Wade lived there, my mother lived there, and they will explain the story. Mother Mabel Thomas has written a detailed uh, look at Bishop Lawson, and I was privileged, and I'm honored, and we co-authored a book entitled The Life, Legend, and Legacy of Bishop R.C. Lawson. Mother Powell has traveled about, and she knew uh, right from the beginning that Bishop Lawson loved children, and he did all he could to develop them. So they later uh, found these three buildings, and they knocked them down, 52, 54, 56, 130. Third Street. Oh, we remember the Lawson Airs who would come on the radio on Sunday nights and sing along with Bishop Lawson. We remember a deacon leader who was a Sunday school teacher. We remember Elder Junius Pratt, who Mother Powell will talk about, the Richardsons, Deacon Dew, uh, so many uh, to remember. Mother Delphi Perry, Mother Carrie F. Lawson, Mother Frances Kennedy, who went to Africa and came back, used to teach the children trombone and instrumental instruments. And then, of course, we can't forget Mother Mabel Thomas and Mother Norvell Thomas worked, uh, uh, Norvell Powell, excuse me, worked so hard with Mother Anna Ruth Hayden, uh, the founder of the Hands Across the Sea. And these were one of, this is one of her junior choirs that they both worked in as they produce the songs of Christ. There are so many we don't have time to mention that worked along with Bishop Lawson. Mother Rosetta Stennett, for an example, uh, who uh, helped Bishop Lawson at the R.C. Lawson Institute in Southern Pines. Mother Helen Weems, who's one of the chief ushers at Refuge Temple, uh, Sister Isa Winans, who went as a principal at the R.C. Lawson Institute, and then Sister Betty Ruth Walker Lethridge, old Mother Outlaw, Mother Beulah Turner Brown, Mother Odessa Wilcox, who was in charge of the Foreign Mission Treasury. And so Bishop Lawson lived on the third floor. His study and school was on the second level, along with the apartment building next to it, and the church sanctuary. So come, let us listen to a first-hand account of the life of the early refuge temple with Bishop R.C. Lawson. And I'll interview with Mother Norvell Powell, senior member of the Church of Our Lawson Jesus Christ Founders Day Committee. She let her tell you about, about the Cry loud, spare, not preach. My father was a Baptist Presbyterian minister in North Carolina. We came to New York when I was four years old. He didn't know too many people in New York, but by the time I was five years old, he had met Bishop Lawson. And they seemed to get along very well together. He, uh, my father was interested in teaching because he had been a teacher of Greek. And uh, Bishop Lawson asked him to come and work in the Bible Institute. And he agreed. He came to the Bible Institute. He was a person who attended Refuge, Old Refuge on 133rd Street. 
he was not a real member. He was a colleague of bishops, and he taught Greek in the Bible Institute. Well, my introduction to Bishop Lawson was when I was um, about six years old. My father told my mother to get the kids together. It was my two brothers, my sister, and my niece who lived with us. And she didn't tell us what was going to happen. She told us we were going to church, and it was going to be a very special day. And so we went to church all dressed up. We heard the service, the choir singing, and at the end of the service, they called us up to the front. That was like a shock. We were obedient. We went up to the front. And here was this wonderful, tall, intelligent, well-spoken man who came over to us and put his hands on each head and prayed for us individually. That was a highlight of my life at that time, that he would be considerate of these children and would pray for them. Of course, we weren't going to be baptized because he didn't believe in baptism of children. He believed, though, in praying for them and having a, saying a sermon over their bodies. After that, we attended Sunday school. Uh, we uh, were members of the junior choir. I was in the junior choir with Mother Hayden. My sister was in the Pioneer Lily Choir with Sister Manigo. Your uh, sister, Mother. Mother Manigo. No, your sister, Mother Mabel. Oh, my Elf. sister was Mother Mabel. Of course, she's my sister, so I didn't call her Mother Mabel Thomas. Yeah. But that's who she was. She grew up to be a wonderful asset to the Church of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mother Mabel Thomas, who became the uh, president of the Women's Council. 1991 to 1997. She produced many innovations in the Women's Council. Uh, we went on many trips to the West Indies. While we were in the West Indies, uh, they had a baptism. And we walked down to the river and we saw the people baptized in the river. Kind of reminded me of old refuge when the people wanted to be baptized when I was a child. Sometimes you had to go to the East River because we had no pool before we got um, old refuge building, 52 to 56 West 133rd Street. And sometimes and I knew one particular old mother who told me about her experience going down to the East River and then breaking the ice and them getting baptized in the East River. On 133rd Street was the church. Uh, it, it was composed of three buildings stuck together, reorganized and, and reconfigured to be the church. But a block away, uh, we could go from 133rd Street into the backyard of 133rd Street and meet the backyard of 132nd Street. On 132nd Street was an apartment building that Bishop Lawson bought. When he sent my father down to uh, Southern Pines to be the uh, uh, principal of Southern Pines, he had us move into uh, the apartment on 132nd Street. It was an apartment building, had four stories, beautiful apartment building. We had beautiful bathrooms and, and whatnot. I met so many people on 133rd Street and on 132nd Street. The saints were so wonderful. When we moved into the building on 132nd Street, they, they had the um, <clears throat> banquet hall, which was on the first floor. They insisted on feeding us, and I felt like a princess, somebody unusual. But on 133rd Street, I was in the choir with Mother Hayden. I was in the Sunday school all the classes in Sunday school. My teachers were Sister Evelyn Blenman, who was the um, daughter of Mother Blenman, who was the uh, organizer of the Willing Workers. And uh, I participated in the junior class in Sunday school. I participated in the senior class in Sunday school. And from the time I was in the junior class, Elder Fox used to ask me to teach Sunday school 
to the children when the teacher was absent. And I enjoyed that because I always wanted to be a teacher anyway. I always had little children gathered around me. We would take chalk and we would sit down on the sidewalk and I would write things. So on 133rd Street, that was easy to do because we had a wonderful stoop as part of the apartment building. And they could sit on the steps and I could sit and stand in front of them and teach. I met a lot of women, a lot of the old mothers, Sister Wade, S Sister uh, Sutton, who used to take the place of Mother Lawson after Mother Lawson died. She prayed on the radio in place of Mother Lawson. Uh, we attended the uh, ABYPU. Uh, I became the secretary of the ABYPU. Uh, we had um, plays which were organized by Elva Bankenscott, who was a t teacher in the Bible school. And uh, for the most part, our life in Old Refuge went along very smoothly. In addition to Sister Elva Vankin Scott, we were blessed to have Mother Cora B. Jones, who was very good at organizing weddings, and she was excellent at organizing plays, scriptural plays for, for the church, especially at Easter and at uh, Christmas time. They were costumed plays. We had robes and hats from uh, those years. Um, we, the men and women participated in, young and old. It was a marvelous, marvelous venue. And we enjoyed it. We had lots of people. I remember the first play that Bishop Bonner was in. They had, were, it was a, more modern than the old plays and where they did informational stories about the church, about Lord Jesus Christ. And each person had their own little part to say. In uh, Refuge Temple, we didn't have that much drama because we had the choirs and we had the Sunday School. Now the Sunday School did produce plays, but not on the scale that Sister Cora B. Jones and Sister Blankenscott had. We never had costumed plays. But uh, remember, I don't have my paper, so I may not remember all of them. On 133rd Street, there were three buildings. The right-hand building was devoted to the offices of Bishop Lawson and the apartment complex of Bishop Lawson. He often had members of the church living there in the, in the apartment complex. Mother Wade lived with him for a long time. Sister Mary Durant lived there for a long time. When he uh, invited people from out of town to come, they stayed there. And of course, our uh, projector here has reminded me that his mother lived up there, up there too. Many people, Bishop was the kind of a man who was interested in people's lives and making sure that they progressed and that they understood. So you had many people who lived there with him forever mm -hmm. until he died. The complex of the church on 133rd Street, of course, was the three main buildings. But on 132nd Street was the apartment house that Bishop owned. This apartment house was a four-story apartment house, complete apartments with, uh, uh, and you, if you can imagine it, in those days, complete bathrooms and heat and hot water, when most of the apartments in Harlem at that time had no heat and, uh, and no hot running water. The building on 132nd Street uh, housed four families that I remember who belonged to the church. There was Elder Pratt, who was the pastor of the church in um, Rockaway, uh, Dorothy Darrell and her family, Henry Jones and his family, Elder Pratt, who was the pastor of the church in Rockaway. I can't remember the others who were there. I know one of the saints from the Bronx also lived there because they lived with us for a while. That apartment building was used on the first floor 
that apartment itself on the first floor was used as the dining room for the church. So after service, the people who were in charge of the dining room were prepared to serve full dinners to those who had attended the church. Also in that building was the um, printing company. Uh, well, he wasn't a company. Elder Hill, Brother Hill, was a very accomplished artist. He made charts, he made um, pictures, banners. He had a studio on the basement floor of that building on 132nd Street. Mm -hmm. Yes. I was very fortunate when I went to Refuge Temple, met a lot of people. Some people I remember very well, some I don't remember that well. But I remember the missionaries very well because they taught us how to live as people and be real people, not be uh, upset by what the people said about us on the outside. I met the missionaries. Sometimes I think I worked with the missionaries more than I worked with the young people. And I met Mother Wade, I met Mother Perry, and I met Sister Bonner's mother, Mother Hill. And they always asked me to work with them because they knew that I was going to college and that I would participate with them in a meaningful way. Well, now, the missionaries always had women who worked with them but were not officers. They were not speakers or they were not uh, well-known people. Uh, Mother Power was one of those missionaries who loved the women of God, loved the missionary, worked with them, went with them wherever they went to the different churches. And uh, when she met me, she invited me to come over to visit her at her home. And she invited me to come one Christmas. Uh, I knew her daughter already. Uh, her daughter was younger than I. And she wanted us to meet her daughter and to talk to her daughter, who happened to also be saved at that time. Well, she invited uh, my sister and I to come over and have Christmas dinner with them. And she sent her son in her husband's car over to New York to my, my apartment to meet us and to bring us over to Great Neck to have dinner with them. That's when I met Deacon Powell. And we became friends, close friends. And then um, we started dating. And then he was called into the service. And he went into the service for four years, four years and uh, he wrote frequently to me, and I wrote back to him. When he came back to, uh, uh, from overseas, he was in, uh, in Korea, the Korean conflict. It was not, they didn't call it a war, they called it the Korean conflict. And when he came back, he asked me to marry him. That was in 1955. We got married in 1955. At Refuge Temple, Bishop Lawson married us. Your, your solitude will be sweet. I just love to be alone sometimes. Oh, yeah. Oh, my Olive, say goodbye. Jesus spent the night in that. He's a pattern for us all, all alone. When we're still in some ocean of the day, we will find it always pays to be alone. There are days I'd like to be all alone, but Christ, my Lord, I can tell you.
fast and pray for the pilgrim in his way. Our days to be with Christ all alone. How we can carry all our grief, he will give us quick relief. There are days I like to be just all alone. Even praise unto our God. Where's less God such as this? He man spoken through the mouth of Isaiah the prophet. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Oh, what those words meant to me when I, over 30 years ago, was afflicted with consumption. I walked into Levington Senate. Uh, and then in Atlas, Indiana, the Assemblies of Christ, the Apostolic Faith Assembly. There I heard the gospel of salvation. I heard that he was a savior and that he baptizes men with the Holy Ghost that would give their full lives in surrender and loving, bless God's service and submission to him. I did as the poet said. I yielded myself to his tender embrace. And by faith I took hold of his word. My fellows fell off and I anchored my soul in the heaven of rest which is my Lord. Thank God for that hour. I accepted him as my savior. Father to God, he healed my body and filled me with the Holy Ghost I called it seven times out of the world in the preach the gospel. I blessed that happy day when Jesus washed my sins away. He taught me how to sing and pray. How to God and today I'm rejoicing in the God and rock of my salvation for his great salvation that came to me through his words of life. Oh, words, words, oh, how blessed God he speak. No wonder when they sent, bless God, the officers to arrest him. And he was preaching in his incomparable way. And they were spellbound and forgot the warmth in their pockets and came back talking of how he had preached. And when they asked them, when they got back uh, to the courthouse, I said, why haven't you bought it? They couldn't say anything but say, never man speak like this man. Surely, bless God, the words that he has uttered today is unnatural and uncomfortable to any uh, orator, any philosopher, or any logician uh, who, bless God, had lived or is living today. Never a man speak like this man. Ah, uh, hallelujah. I thank God for the words of life. Thank God that through his spirit, hallelujah, Peter declared a tent and be baptized, every one of them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, for the mission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah to God. Oh, may God grant you to bless God to hear him tonight. Hear him speak. Hallelujah to God to your soul. Hallelujah to God. When he said to the uh, blessed God, Bartimus, uh, take up your cross and follow me. When he said to Zacchaeus, come down. He takes up the blind and gives them sight in order that they might follow him. He brings down them that are high, out from their high places in order that may, they may, bless God, follow him. He's still speaking words, bless God, to you. I thank him for the words incomparable that he spoke. I bless God, as it were, over the very gapping uh, mouth of the grave. For who could comfort you like Jesus in the time when a loved one is laid away in the grave? What philosopher can bring such words as John 14? Let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. Then my Father's house and many mentions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to a proud place for it. If I go, I'll come again and receive you unto myself. And where I am, there you may be also. What words of comfort. What words that fall like a benediction after prayer upon the souls of men. And blessed be God when they are mistreated. When you're misjudged. When evil men take advantage of you and seem to prosper and joy over it. That's the word of God coming to heart. Saying, bless God, don't be envious of the workers of iniquity. And bless God, for they soon shall be cut out. 34th chapter of the psalm. How God speaks to us through the word of the Lord. Say, the equally, the wicked, bless God, shall not live out half of his days. May God grant you, amen, to follow him who spake as never man speak. Then he said also again, the blessed be God, in the word of the 8th chapter of St. John, where he said, I am the light of the world. He that follow me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Then in John 14 again, he said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the light. 
that word that in St. John 17, third, third verse, it says, This is life eternal. And that blessed God, uh, they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom uh, thou hast sent. To know him indeed is life eternal. May God grant you therefore, hallelujah, God, to follow in his footsteps. Follow him, blessed God, who is life eternal. This is life eternal. To believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Not only have we heard words incomparable, but we have also, bless God, seen how it is incomparable love wherewith he has loved us. And Calvary is the expression of that love. Come with me. Let's take a walk up Mount Calvary and view the place where my dear Savior died. Bless God. Look at him as he hangs upon the cross. Look from his hands and feet. Bless God. Look at him. And as we look at him, we see him as our sin bearer. We see him as the one that bore our sins upon the cross. That we, bless God, through him, might be saved. The poet says, when I for there the one that's cross, I boast the prince of glory die. If my riches gain, I count but Lord, and full contempt on all my pride. But did it, Lord, that I should boast, save in the cross of Christ my Lord. And all vain things that charm me most, I sacrifice them to his blood. See from his head, his feet, hand, his feet. Sorrow and love flow mingle down. Did e'er such love and sorrow meet? Are thorns composed so rich a crown? For all the whole realm of nature mine could be an offering far too small. Love so amazing and love so divine. The man my life, my soul, my all. Look yonder upon the cross. When his hands are nailed back, open thus God his bosom to them. And thus God that are weary. Saying, come unto me all ye that are weary and have a leader. And I'll give you rest. Yeah, he said, hey man, lean upon my best. Oh, the poet, that's God, as rightly said, but that's God, when he thinks concerning that God, uh, his love and his mercy, praise God, he said, I heard the voice of Jesus say, come unto me and rest. Lie down thy weary one, lie down thy head upon my breast. One tried the invitation, said, I came to Jesus and I found, and that's God, in him I star my son, and in the light of life I walk until traveling days are done. The cross speaks of his love. When words fail, thus God to express it. When types and shadows fail, adequately to express his love. He in his own body wrote the signature and nature of his love in the wound that was in his heart. The wound that was in his hand. The wound that was in his feet. Two in his feet, says God. And two in his hands and one in his side. L-O-V-E. That's what they spell. Third chapter, St. John, 16 verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth upon him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Fifth chapter, Romans says, God committed his love towards us, and when he was sent as Christ died for the ungodly. Then it goes on further to say, <coughs> when we were yet without strength, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man, the one died. <coughs> yet for a you for a good man, but some even dare to die. But God committed his love towards us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if we were enemies, we were reconciled to God with the death of his son. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Not only so, but we join God through Jesus Christ, our Lord, whom we have now received the atonement. The point also gives us another aspect of this cause. Said in the third chapter of 1st Epistle John, uh, 16 verse, Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. So God, in the person of Christ, gave his life, his body to the nail, and there hung, bless God, from nine o'clock until three, to win us over on his side, to redeem us from our iniquity, and to purify unto himself that peculiar people value some good works. We've heard of Calvary. We've heard also of his resurrection. For he has delivered up our offenses, but raised, thank God, from the dead for our justification. If he'd only died, we would not have been helped. But he not only died, but he rose again from the dead with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. Him and so, let us God, he's a risen Lord. He's our Redeemer, our Savior, and our soon coming King. For this Christ who rose from the dead also ascended unto heaven after 50 days. And then not only that, but he was deceived up into heaven. And moreover, he's told us, bless God, that he's coming back again. Words, bless God, we have heard. We've heard of his matchless life. We've heard of his matchless, uncomfortable words. We've heard of his uncomfortable love. We've heard of his death. Expression of his love. We've heard of his resurrection from the dead. Expressing his power for redemption. We've heard of his ascension and reception into heaven. 
to move. Hey, it is second coming. If the shepherds rejoice, just think of me. My God, what are we to rejoice? We are the elected followers. We are the alarm and stir the world for our praise and our rejoicing. Amen. Our happiness over his birth. They were only happy over his birth. But we ought to be happier over his, not only his birth, but his life and his, uh, his gospel and his un- uh, comfort- incomparable love and of his unprecedented resurrection and of his great ascension and reception of the heaven and of his soon coming king. Christians rejoice. Everywhere, lift up your head. Don't give yourself over to party and drinking and carousing and voluptuous living. Let us not only have a nice meal, but let us have a season and a feast of rejoicing. Happy over the fact that we are in the light of God and we have been born again and we are filled with the Spirit. While remember, 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 there are thousands and millions who haven't heard of the Christ, who don't know him as we know him. Rejoice that God made choice among men and by some inexplicable way that we have brought you near to him, has saved you from a miserable life of sin and made you an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. And he has given you all that he has and he'll someday come back for you and he's prepared a mansion for you. Many mansions in the sky. Amen. He's coming back to reign on earth a thousand years and you'll be there with him. Rejoice, rejoice. Thank you to God for the king of the redemption north now. Let us have a Christmas after the Bible order. Not in Rodin and John Quinney. Not in drunkenness and reveling. But in praise and God for what we also have seen and heard. Let us join with the shepherds and touch the spirit and glorify God like they did. Let us yeah, join with the angels singing glory to God in the heart and peace on earth. Good will to all men. Glory to God in the heart for saving our souls. Glory to God in the heart for getting us such a gospel. Glory to God in the heart for such a love he has. But we see love Glory to God in the heart for his resurrection. Glory to God in the heart for his ascension. Glory to God in the heart for his resurrection.